Hey, I'm Ashley from Central Coast Council and today I'd love to share with you our progress as we embark on the development of a new coastal management program for the Tugra Lakes estuary. I would firstly like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and the waters that form the Tugra Lakes catchment because this waterway has been such a valued place for the dark and young people who've lived here for over 40,000 years and it continues to be a special place for everyone in our community today. The unfortunate reality is that human development around the lakes has had a negative impact on the health of this ecosystem. And overcoming these issues is going to be a long-term project that requires collaboration from everyone, including all of the different government agencies and the community. The land that flows into Tugra Lakes is owned and managed by heaps of different stakeholders, including the government and different organizations and private landholders. And this does add complexity to managing the lakes but Central Coast Council are really stepping up to take a leading role in caring for Tugra Lakes and we have a great opportunity at the moment to revise our long-term strategy for managing the lakes and it's very important to us that this is a joint process involving the community and all of our partners in a way that allows us to be open to learning together and using those learnings to co-create clear realistic visions and action plans to guide us forward. Here's a really quick map that I put together just to give context to all of the different lakes and rivers and creeks and the land as well that together forms the Tugger Lakes estuary system. And we refer to this as the catchment because all of the water that falls onto the land anywhere in this region is caught and will eventually make its way into the lakes, either through runoff, um, down into groundwater or even through our stormwater drain system. I think it's really important to note here that um, the Tugra Lakes area is located in the centre of New South Wales' fastest growing corridor between Sydney and Newcastle. And the regional plan forecasts that the Central Coast population is going to increase by more than 75,000 people by the year 2036. Um, Tugra Lakes catchment has been identified by the state government as one of the best places to accommodate future growth. And this development pressure does have the potential to reduce the natural ability of the catchment to absorb and treat excess runoff in the way that nature intended. And this could potentially result in some unacceptable impacts to the health of our lakes if not managed properly. And that makes it really important for us to work really hard now with all of levels of government and the community to ensure that our forward planning is really solid. So we're developing a new coastal management program that will replace the current existing estuary management plan which has been um, established since 2006. Developing this new plan is a mandatory requirement of the 2016 Coastal Management Act, but it's also just something that we really want to do. And I want to note here that while we're developing the new program, we're also still working really hard at the same time to deliver the actions in the existing plan. So, so far, 86% of the actions identified in the current plan have either been completed or are ongoing. And this has been funded by over $30 million in Australian government grants. Um, the key achievements that we've been able to get from this is, includes 50 kilometres of stream rehabilitation, 374 hectares of wetland conservation and 29 hectares of salt marsh rehabilitation. And all of this um, has resulted in the health of the estuaries really improving, with 56% of our sites showing an improvement and 13% remaining stable. And that's over the last nine year period. The process of developing these new coastal management programs is a really great opportunity for us to work with you, the community, to establish a clear shared vision for what we all want the future to look like. And the result will be a, a nice action plan that sets us on a path towards collectively achieving that vision. The development of that plan is going to take into consideration the ecological health and the coastal threats as well as the community values. And it's really important to us that we find a balance between the environmental outcomes and the social and economic outcomes for our region. An important step in this process will be to identify appropriate water quality and ecological health standards based on realistic expectations. Um, you can see here that the process is a five stage process and so right now we've just finished stage one and we're about to move into stage two. You might be wondering as far as funding goes what the plan is um, and the good news is that there's lots of really great opportunities available that cover both the preparation and the implementation of the new management plan, including so the New South Wales government has a coastal and estuaries grants program 
and that's typically allocated on a two to one basis. So council would only need to provide one third of that funding. It's actually really good news this week. Um, it's just been announced that our funding submission for that grant program was successful. So Central Coast Council have just been awarded $644,000 to complete stages two and three of developing the coastal management plan. Um, and this funding is really greatly appreciated because it's going to be of major benefit to support us in the really important work that we're doing to improve the health um, and the resilience of this waterway. We're also really excited to announce that we've just published the first stage of the process, which is the scoping study. And so this identifies the purpose and it maps out a series of forward planning tasks to allow us to fill key knowledge gaps that we need to gather the information that we need in order to establish a really effective and implementable um, coastal management plan. We did a risk assessment, a first pass risk assessment to identify and prioritise the key issues and threats to Tugra Lakes and to assess different management arrangements. This information was then used to create the Ford plan, which recommends the different studies and assessments and reports that are about to be undertaken um, in the upcoming stages of developing the new plan. The highest priority studies will help us to look at water quality of the incoming water and set some water quality targets for future development. It will also allow us to refine what we know about the coastal processes in the entrance channel and how these relate to the rest of the lakes, as well as to document the social and economic value of that entrance area itself, so that that can be properly considered, including in light of any potential future risks associated with sea level rise. Where we plan to pull all of this information together to look at the community use and values as well as the threats to the estuary and our opportunities to make a really positive impact. And all of this will guide us when we review the management options and decide together on the best way to move forward. A host of studies of Tugra Lakes have repeatedly concluded that the bulk of inflow into Tugra Lakes is from water catchment runoff. So the oceanic influence through the entrance channel is actually quite limited. And we know that we really need to focus on sustainable catchment management in order to improve the health of the lake. We also know that the entrance channel is of particular interest to the community. So a revised entrance management strategy is proposed um, in stage three. Another issue of environmental concern is the loss of seagrass um, and the abundance of seagrass and macroalgal rack is also concerning to the community. So a review of rack management practices and procedures and the costs and benefits um, for that is also proposed for stage three. Interestingly, the influence of groundwater um, particularly as a pathway for nutrient contamination is something that's recently being explored through a university funded grant. Um, and the preliminary results really justify further exploration of this, um, including the viability of any potential treatment options. You may be aware that last year, the state government created an independent expert panel in response to the community concern over water quality. And that expert panel were asked to examine all of the different sources of information related to the management of water quality in the lakes. Um, so they've now produced a report. It contains 52 recommendations. And Central Coast Council, we really warmly welcome this report. And we've really genuinely um, put effort into holistically integrating these findings into this and future stages of the development of the new plan. So of the 52 recommendations, 44 of them are considered to be either partly or fully achievable within the scope of the development of our new plan. Um, with consideration of our current resourcing capacity and our financial situation, 16 of those recommendations have been identified as appropriate for the state government to lead on just in order to progress them in a really timely manner. I really encourage you to read the full expert panel report if you haven't already. Um, it's available to download from our website, the Your Voice Our Coast page. Um, and in the final appendix of our scoping study, you'll find a table that we've created which summarises all of the recommendations and themes them and numbers them in a way that allows us to more easily integrate them into our planning process. Both the expert panel um, and us, Central Coast Council, have really invited the community to share what you value and consider to success to look like for our waterway and to begin the process of building transparency and trust and respect. And we're really committed to working with the community to explore these values and to co-create clear, realistic and measurable actions so that we can work together towards that shared future. And so phase one of our engagement was highly successful. 
Um, so we had over 3,900 um, people visit our project page and 1,168 responses to our survey. We also had over 350 people enter our focus group candidate pool and we've already held a series of focus groups. And the insights that we gained from this are so valuable and they've very much been taken into consideration as we've developed that phase one scoping study um, and, and also in the development of our community and stakeholder engagement strategy. Um, and all of these are available for you to download from the Your Voice Outpost website, including the results that we've published um, of the key findings of that community consultation. So I really do encourage you to jump on and check that out. Thank you so much to everyone who has provided input so far. Your insights are genuinely so highly valued and taken into consideration. If you would like to get involved and haven't already, we would love to hear from you. It's really important to us that this coastal management program development process reflects the values and preferences of our community. So we invite you to register to join the pool of candidates for focus groups um, or to register just to keep um, in touch um, as we progress through the different stages of developing the plan. And we will be opening up further consultation opportunities through the Your Voice Our Coast website um, in, as we move into the next stage. So thank you again to everyone who has contributed so far. And I really do look forward to keeping you updated as we move along this journey together. Thank you.